Good afternoon, it's Jeremy here and I have another awesome tutorial for you. In this tutorial, I want to be showing you how to apply this cool grain noise texture in Illustrator just using a few basic tools. So you can see here, here's the final illustration that we have. I didn't actually create the illustration, I grabbed it off freepick.com. You can go get some free illustrations there. But I did customize the colors a bit and, and shifted things around just to make it a bit more of a custom scene. So you can see here, we got this cool grain effect. If I zoom in, looks awesome, looks grungy, makes it a bit more organic and unique and actually have some flavor to it, which is kind of good. And you can see the difference between the flat illustration here. So this one looks a lot more bland. Obviously it doesn't have all the elements that I've created, but you can see the difference. It still looks good, still nice. But if you want that grain noise texture effect, then I'm gonna show you how to do that now. So before we jump in, I'm just gonna show you how the grain texture works and the best overlays to use in the transparency panel. So the two key windows you wanna use is transparency and appearance. You can go to your window at the top left corner to open those up. Just locate them using your alphabetical order and just select it to open it. So you can see here, I've got three orange circles under these effects and they've got three different transparency, transparencies. So for this one, you can see if I go to my transparency panel, it's on screen. So what it does is it gets rid of the, the black. Uh, I'm just gonna explain it in simple terms. Like it gets rid of the black and just applies the white on top, which is kind of cool. The second one is multiply. So it multiplies the um, black color of the gradient on top of the color. Um, so you can see it gets rid of the white and just has the black there. And the third option is using overlay. So what overlay does, it pretty much overlays the color and mixes it with the bottom color, which is this orange. And it also gets rid of the white color as well. So the white fades out and we have it there. And the cool thing about these effects is that you can actually play around with the gradient tool. So you can see I'm just playing with the gradient tool on the right hand side and I'm moving the bar of the white or the black to create different effects. And I can also change it so I can just go linear gradient or I can go circular gradient or I can use the um, new gradient tool as well but things would kind of get laggy and stuff so I'll probably just stick with the linear or the radial gradient. You can also press G as well and you can manipulate it this way but make sure you're clicking on the lines to move it on the edges you can rotate it as well as you can see there you can also edit the the amount so you can do a lot of cool stuff there and cool effects so that's how you simply manipulate it and use it using um, transparency and the gradient tool as you can see here and now i'm going to show you how to apply it to the illustration so i'm just going to use this flat illustration here so what you want to do is you want to select something so this is group so i'm just going to ungroup everything just to make it easy i'm going to select the orange pencil part and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to click on the gradient tool so it should be black and white that's what you want and i'm just going to go with the linear version so click the left part i'm going to close my swatches panel real quick just move this over so you guys can see that and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go to my appearance panel And the reason why I do it in the appearance panel is because I can easily turn off the effect if I don't want it on that shape. And just remember as well, you can see here, I added the gradient to the shape. You want to make sure that you duplicate the shape first. So I forgot to do that. So what I'm going to do now, I'll control Z. So what I'm going to do first is select the shape, press control C, control V. I'm going to press con control C and control F. You can also go object and you can duplicate it there. So now you can see I have a duplicate and make sure that it's on top so we can see there and it's obviously it's above the original shape because we pasted it on front that's why you press control F and not control V because F will put it in front which is really cool so we have that what I'm gonna do now is click on the gradient tool and we want this black and white color you can see there and I'm gonna make it just linear and I'm just gonna play with it there and see that I like that that's kind of cool so you can move around these bars here as you can see so cool, that looks good. I'm gonna go to my appearance panel, press FX and go to Photoshop effects, texture, and we're gonna click on the grain. 
So now what I can do, I can zoom out. So I can press control minus and plus to zoom out. Or you can press it in the little corner here. So what you want to do is you want to go to grain. You want also want to select stippled effect, stipple grain type. You can play around with other ones, but that'll be for another video. And you want to play with the intensity so you can see the effect. If you do it more higher, you can see the black is more dominant and doesn't fade as much, but you want to try and keep it somewhere in the middle. And the contrast you can play with as well. So you don't want to make it too harsh, so you want to make it have a nice fade. So we'll have it like this. That looks good. So I'm going to press OK. So now we have this effect. And now what I'm going to do is go to my transparency panel and just apply one of these transparencies that I did before. So you can see this is multiply. Screen will look like this. And overlay would look like this. So overlay effect kind of looks good, which is nice. Another cool tip as well is if in your gradient tool, you can actually um, continue to change and play around with the effect. As you can see here, maybe you don't want it too dominant. I can play around with it. I can also click on the white part there and press zero opacity. So you can see it fades out differently. So if I zoom in here, you can see that. But if I get rid of the white, it will fade out differently. As you can see there. So that's another tip as well. Especially if it's on another transparency mode, I can press zero and it just fades out a bit, um, a bit more. As you can see there. Another cool thing as well is if I grab a color from my swatches, I try and keep it the same color as the bottom shape of whatever object it is. And I'll drag it and put it on the black. And you can see it sort of um, makes the effect a little bit more subtle. So you can see that it's more harsh. And then if I drop that color on there and play around with that, you can see it sort of has, it, it looks a bit different, which is interesting. So you can play around with that. Sometimes I do that. And if I test it on overlay, and screen as well, you can see the difference there. But if it was just black, you can see the change there. So that's just a cool tip to keep in mind. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to overlay. I'll keep that. I'll then go and move on to the legs here. I'll start with the first leg. And I'll just repeat the process. So go to appearance panel, click on the FX button, texture, grain. I'll keep it the same and just press okay. Go to transparency panel, and for this one, I'll use multi overlay or probably multiply. So I go overlay and click the gradient button. So you can see there it has a nice cool grain there. And the cool thing with overlay, it adds a bit of more color, as you can see there. But if you don't want that color to like overlay on top, so you can see it's making it lighter than the actual color here. I can once again go to the white part and the white on the slider, click on the circle button, go to the opacity and drop it to 0% and it will get rid of that color there. As you can see there. But I kind of like it, so I'm just going to leave it. And I'll repeat the process for all the other parts as well. And I'm adjusting as I go to see what feels right, what looks cool. So many different ways of doing it. And do one on the face. On the face, I'll do the same thing. So I'm always Control C, Control F on top. Duplicate it. Go to my gradient tool, click the gradient. And then go to appearance panel and apply the effect. This one, I'm going to click on screen and I'm going to flip it so I can click reverse and flip that. Drop it down like this because I only want it subtle. Like that. So now you can see that cool effect on her face. I'll do the arm as well. I'll do the background as well, same type of thing, 
this one I'll, I'll click on the radio I can press G to manipulate it play around with it reverse it Just make it more subtle. I don't want it too harsh, so I'll drag it outside the bounds by pressing G and just playing around, clicking on that circle button, just making it subtle like that, which kind of looks cool. And I've got to bring this back. Make sure that the layers is on the right layer, so it's not overlapping. I'm being weird. Let's see here, I have to drag that down. Just cool. There's a flat illustration turned to a grain noisy texture. Hope you guys found this tutorial helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this and I can create some more tutorials like this in the future and I can show you how to create some more texture brushes and stuff like that. So yeah, leave a comment, hit the subscribe button for more design content every week and I hope you have a fantastic day. I'll catch you in the next one.